Hi everyone, this is Jar Citizen Gamer. I wanted to talk today about a game that's very close to my heart, and that's called Star Citizen. Now, Star Citizen for me is kind of the culmination of a long-term dream. My I got into PC gaming when I was in high school. I had before that time only had the Atari 2600, an Apple IIe, and a Sega Master System. And I went over to a friend's house and I saw on their 386, there they are playing Wing Commander. It blew me away. Um, it was something that I hadn't experienced before. It, it showed me how much more powerful PC gaming was compared to the other options that I had at that time. And I was absolutely just floored. And it was because of that, that game, that I went and actually pursued my first uh, computer, which was a Pentium 1, 33 megahertz, with a mighty 4 megabytes of RAM. And played that, and X-Wing, religiously, was very, very much into doing, playing that game for hours a day. In fact, I was so much in the Wing Commander that I uh, even had the Sega CD version, which was... If you ever try to play Wing Commander with a three-button controller and D-pad, that is absolutely just a nightmare. But I still managed to finish that one as well. So, what's important about Star Citizen to me is that it's a resurgence of the old-school kind of flight game or space game or whatnot that we used to have back during the, the dawning of the PC as a gaming platform. And, but it's brought to a lot of modern standards with the online and with the persistent universe and with basically charting the way that you play the game the way you want. You want to be a bounty hunter, you want to be a smuggler, you want to be a miner, combat pilot, you want to be a marine for hire on the ground, whatever. Uh, guild support, all that. Um, I fell in love with the concept, not just for the concept, but because I have enjoyed thoroughly all of Chris Roberts' previous games. And there were some that I played that honestly I didn't even know until recently that were also Chris Roberts' games that I also loved. Um, I heard that Crusader, No Regret, Crusader, No Remorse were some of Chris Roberts' games that I didn't even know that until several weeks ago. And those games, uh, I still own them. They stuck with me. They're fantastic. And I've also grown to embrace and really love the Star Citizen community. I find that there's a lot of really good thinkers out there, there's people with great ideas, they're passionate, they care about the game just as much as I do. We're giving information uh, to the developers, we're giving feedback, we're trying whatever we can do to try to make sure that the game is going to be exactly what it should be. And of course, not everyone's going to be happy with every aspect of the game, you can't please everybody. But we're trying to get to the area where it's thoroughly enjoyable for almost everybody, for like for most people. And the community is growing massively. Since the uh, CitizenCon 2015, oh, they've probably gained close to, getting close now to 20,000 new people uh, since then. And uh, I think it's only going to pick up more and more, especially after the FPS module comes out. Now there are some issues that have come to the forefront that some people are concerned about, myself among them. And this mostly has to do with controls and the flight model. And right now there is a big debate in the Arena Commander section of the forums. It's the Katamari. It's controller versus controller and that's not named correctly. It should be interactive mode versus other modes because it has nothing to do with the controller you pick up. Interactive mode is a mode where basically you have an aiming layer on top of your flight layer so you're getting a four axis control with two axis. Which is something that no other control mode can have. Uh, that includes virtual stick on the mouse or relative mode on, this, uh, on the mouse as well. Also stick and gamepad. They can't control gimbal weapons this way. And because of that it's created a situation where uh, one control type is dominant and the ability to use a particular kind of weapon which of course is gimbals forcing the other control options to basically fly fixed or to, be, to remain competitive they, they have things like look ahead mode 
uh, which has just recently been made set to be the uh, default mode I think maybe hopefully because they're getting rid of IM we can hope but that's not as good it's not as um, what it is is it's point and click you put your cursor basically over the target you press the mouse button in you're shooting the target and the problem with that is is that when the game was pitched they were they did say that the game would control with a mouse like freelancer but as far as freelancer controls there would be no point and click now this mode is exactly that it is point and click it is everything that they said it would not be now I myself have posted uh, a couple different ideas I had the Tucker gimbal system posted which took off really big it's about a deflection based control a little bit like look ahead mode but with more customization and also sensor tracking gimbals which has well over right around an 80 percent support by the community uh, who've looked at it it's using existing systems to create tracking automated gimbal weapons based upon either um, uh, infrared or electromagnetic or a cross section which is your basically your image of your ship so it those three are already in the game for missile locks, so I thought why not apply them to uh, the system of the guns and also this could be used for like AI automated guns like the class 4 turrets now I've even gone on a radio show uh, Star Citizen Radio the base and had debates about this and I think that it's coming more and more to the front as people get into the game and they can see what needs to be worked on now Another thing I'd like to address outside of the base controls, like the, the imbalance between control types, is that there is a problem where basically right now uh, everything seems to have been optimized around IM, so interactive mode, so that it is very hard to uh, use the other controllers just by default. Honestly, right now, Star Citizen has some of the worst control interface for sticks or game pads it's very you f you end up your your arm gets sore in a couple minutes and I I can play flight sims all day long and I'll be fine but because of the overshoot and the undershoot you end up it feels like the stick is your more your opponent than actually the ships you're fighting against and that's hopefully gonna be something that's gonna be resolved very very soon the reason I say that is that this week they're supposed to be posting a new document that's going to have the updated flight model information their dire general direction they want to take the game and possibly even controls and they have been looking at some communities ideas Calix is has kind of been leading the charge out there as a developer he's mentioned some of my ideas by name and I think that he really is striving to get the game closer to the original vision uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here shortly and I don't think we're gonna see a lot of the big changes until arena commander 2.0 comes out where we get the persistent universe testing grounds where we can have the multi crew ships and the single uh, player fighters and things interacting with one another but it became apparent during the demonstration of the uh, persistent universe that the ships still don't handle right the, the thrusters put out way too much thrust the, con the, the, the constellation class they were showing it handled more like how you would envision a hummingbird flying now a big ship like that shouldn't just go up down left right like is easy as you're as you're pressing a button there should just be an acceleration factor these these ships need to have uh, more feel of mass and weight and real uh, spool up time uh, acceleration and deceleration needs to be longer this is uh, very important. In space, there shouldn't be a top-end uh, speed cap. Within, obviously, they need something for the game limits. I get that, but at if even if they have that, the, the the big factor should be that your your how how fast your ship accelerates. Uh, so you can have, for example, uh, a 300 uh, 350R, which is a racing ship of the 300 line series. It should accelerate much faster than say something like. Oh, uh, on an Aurora, for example, and they both, if it was space, would have unlimited speed. But, uh, or even if they had a speed cap, the one that would reach it first should obviously be the 350R. 
The thing is, though, is that right now it's like all the ships can reach maximum acceleration in under three seconds. It doesn't really matter. Uh, they just hit a top end speed, and it causes some issues where basically, for people who are looking at the game from a physics perspective, who who were kind of promised the idea that they were using a full Newtonian system, some of the speeds on the strafing and the acceleration, when you put them to the measurements, you end up with 20 plus G's on the pilot, even on lateral motions, which, yes, it's the future. Yes, there's sci tech and all that. But those kind of G's in there, and they've already has specified there's the way that they talk about things. These are there are not inertial dampeners like Star Trek. So that would kill a pilot. Even if you had a better suit or whatnot, your brain is going to get smashed inside your skull. So they need to tone it down and they need to make the ships feel like they have more weight or and also keep them within realistic boundaries that are defined by physics. So that also leads us into uh, the problem that they have with the way that they have set up thrusters, which is they are, the thrusters themselves are large vectors, uh, they're large vectoring thrusters that cause a a delay or cause a problem in how thrust works where you end up overshooting undershooting a lot because as one of the previous videos I pointed out uh, how they showed how a multi-vector thrust like a fixed one with multiple directions and then uh, like the way NASA does it now uh, a model like that can use less thrusters and actually get more accuracy on turning and repositioning the ship also the main engine should be significantly more of the actual thrust of the ship right now the thrusters almost seem to have the same uh, split like they almost have the same power as the engine itself which makes no sense whatsoever and all they would need to do is have the main thruster vector like modern day fighters do you would just have it so that it's gonna push off and push the thrust off back to the right or back to the left or whatever direction so that it actually helps turn the ship and helps maneuver it as I said modern day fighters do this and even uh, rockets and things like that and that go up into space do the same thing. So there's no reason they can't apply this into the ship itself. And also they could attach maybe micro thrusters, not main thrusters, but like small little ones you would see like on wing tips or whatnot that would basically be a little assistance uh, to help uh, share that uh, thrust requirement to get the ship turning the way it needs to turn. Now aside from all of that, and this is all an alpha game, and this is all things in development, and we're talking about it, we're debating it, we're all learning, and I think things will turn out fine. It's just good. some things you have to fight for, and there's a lot of people with a lot of different opinions, and everyone wants something different, and that's just, that's not uh, to be unexpected. What I look forward to in Star Citizen, and why I think it's going to be pretty much the game that dominates this channel and most of my gaming life is because it combines everything. You have your MMO, you have your FPS, you have your flight games, it's all in one. But you've removed the things from the MMO genre that I hate. There's no level mechanics. There's no power bar selection to press whatever number to do whatever attack on somebody. It's skill-based. It's up to you as a player to control how effective you are, how well you know your ship, how well you can handle your gun, what's your strategy, what's your tactics. It all comes down to you. It doesn't come down to some purple gear that drops out of some 40-man raid that you got to run a hundred times and hopefully get the piece. And they're constantly going to be adding to this world. They're going to be adding new planets. They're looking at procedural generation. That was a stretch goal we reached as they add new systems we have to find them and they've already said that if we find them uh, we can name them obviously with some uh, <laughs> with some precautionary things on that because you know someone's out there is going to name some planet uh, something pretty vile so yeah obviously they're going to keep that in check but you know the game's going to grow and why I think this is going to be in some respects in the end a better game than Elite Dangerous is that while Elite is ambitious, and I own it, and I love the game, but it's too wide. Uh, you've got 450 billion star systems, and to me, that is too big. You, 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 you realize that for that many star systems, you could play the game online and never see another player for your entire life. With Star Citizen keeping their systems down to a couple hundred by the time they get down with the vision, 
I think it's, I think it's maybe up to 300. I'm, I can't really remember the exact number. But by the time they get to that, that apex, that's not too big. We've got a space. Each section is big in and of itself, but that still keeps people kind of confined to a playable area. And I think that's what we need. You know, someone closing, you know, I believe in Star Citizen and what it holds for those bold enough to push this vision forward. Innovation only comes with trying something new. AAA gaming has become stale and unwilling to push the boundaries, burying us in crappy sequels and lackluster PC ports. And as a gaming community, we have to be willing to step out of our comfort zones. We need to embrace independent vision and be willing to try things we've not tried before. PC gaming was born out of garage programmers who are now host household names. I mean, Chris Roberts, Sid Meier's, and there's others. But without both past and present uh, pioneers of PC gaming, we'd be forced into the corporate clone gaming of EA and Ubisoft and others of their ilk. You don't have to pledge a ton to get on Star Citizen, but if you want to see something that pushes those AAA guys out of their comfort zones, then you need to step out of your comfort zone. This is because where gaming goes, where the whole industry goes, depends on you, depends on your choices and where you spend your money. As always, leave a comment or question below. This is Jarus, signing out.